Okay, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. T today's date, it is uh, July 8th of 2021, and it is 3 p.m. The video you're seeing here on the screen, <coughs> I uh, uploaded about 30 minutes ago. And when I was uploading it was when this cumulative update for Windows 11 with the number there was being installed on my computer. <clears throat> so the upload was completed before <clears throat> I needed to reboot. I've rebooted and I've come back up and I did this right away because uh, on the taskbar I have two monitors and with Windows 11 the taskbar was just showing on um, one monitor. But taskbar settings, I don't know if that was even there before. Maybe it was. But we have some new options. Well, we, these are not, I don't think, but like search, task view, widgets. Do you want the pen menu, the touch keyboard, uh, whatever that is? Uh, task bar corner overflow. Choose which icons may appear in the task bar corner. All others will appear in the task bar corner overflow menu. Oops. And I don't know. I'm. It, I don't know what's. Uh, I'm not sure what they're. I could click on it and find out, you know, pretty quick. Okay, taskbar behaviors. Okay, you can automatically hide. Okay, you can decide whether you want your taskbar left, like the old Windows 10, or whether you want this new way. So we want the centered, of course. We want the new way. Okay, you can automatically hide the taskbar. Uh, you can show badges, unread message counts on the taskbar app. I that's clicked. Uh, you can show my taskbar on all displays. Now that I had to click on it. And now I have the taskbar on the bottom of both of these monitors, which was not an option before. Uh, I'm not sure if this was an option before. Share any windows. Share any window from my taskbar. And then this, I don't know whether it was new or not. Hover or click on the far corner of taskbar to show the desktop. Hover or click on the far corner of the taskbar to show the desktop. Hmm. Show desktop. Well, they disappeared. On both monitors I click on that they both come back I have to think about that I'm not sure what the heck that's all about so that's that um, over here let's see what's new and improved start now has a search bar a search box to make it easier to find what you're looking for Start now has a search box to make it easier to find what you're looking for. Start now. Start now is that uh, that start. Okay, that's the only. Okay, click on that. Okay. Um, how is this different from before? Uh, type here to search uh, pinned items uh, recommended was this let's see okay that was I'm sure there before I believe I don't know I mean I, I know recommended was there but and more was there had to be there yeah okay so anyway, this is what I have, you know, Microsoft. 
this is what's on my pinned items here. Um, and that's going to depend on whatever you, you know, set up and using. Anyway, I have Microsoft Edge, Word, my mail program calendar, Microsoft Store, Photos. Let's click on Photos. Okay. So these are... Okay, these are photos because I just took this a few minutes ago. And I used that as the thumbnail, I believe. Did I? Hmm. No, I did not. So I would have to go into, let's see. Edit video. Yeah, okay, I don't. But here it is, really, basic. Well, it's, uh, yeah, I can just go ahead and use that rather than upload this one here. Okay, so I will save that. Okay, what was I? Close this. Oh, I was showing you this. Let me, uh, let me close this. And go back down to here. Looks to me like maybe there's a few more in this row. You know, in each row. So I showed you photos. Well, and I didn't show you all this stuff, but then there's settings. And you have uh, Windows Update, you have Display, Sound. Let's, let's click on Display. Shows you that I have two monitors, multiple displays, choose the presentation mode. Nightlight is off, use HDR. One of my monitors, I, I, know, I know one of the monitors is HDR, but it seems to me like when I turn it on, let me turn it on here. Uh, okay, monitor one, which you don't see. Now, uh, it looks a little yellow. Instead of being pure white, it looks a little bit yellow. Uh, that's probably adjustable someplace. But I'm going to go ahead and click it off for right now. better. Now you don't see the other monitor. See, custom uh, scale factor is set, turn off scaling, uh, chain scaling, resolution. See, I can, of course, I'd have to pick out which display. Let's see what happens here. Oh, it's probably which, okay, it's the one I'm clicked on up here. So this monitor, which you're not seeing, is actually a 4K. If I go down here, and I click on this, I have the option of going with the recommended 3840 by 2160. But then you have to mess with that, getting the adjustment, and it's out of sync, you know, sort of out of sync with the other, uh, if I drag something, so I don't know. I may, I may mess with it again. Display orientation, of course. Advanced display with refresh rates and what have you, I guess. Okay, display one is the LG HDR 4K. Man, when it's telling me it's HDR like that, it makes me want to go ahead and click it, you know. Uh, display mode, 1920 by 1080, 60, you know, hertz. Active signal mode is 38. 40 by 2160 at uh, 60 hertz makes me think. Okay, here it says HDR certification not found. 
Okay, more about HDR certification. What does this say? To display streaming high dynamic range HDR video in Windows 10 version 1803 or later, the built-in display for your laptop, tablet, or 2-in-1 PC needs to support HDR. Well, mine does, supposedly. The built-in display, because I've actually used it in, you know, the... Uh, the built-in display needs to have a resolution of 1080p or more and a recommended maximum brightness of 300 nits. Okay. Hmm, okay. Okay, whoops, there we are underneath there. Where are you? Uh, there, okay. Okay, uh, back. Well, let's click on this other monitor here. Okay, now this is my monitor that you're seeing, actually. Let's see, it says HDR, but it may, I bet it's not activated, let's see. Huh. Okay, it says down here, you know, HDR not supported on this my on this monitor. Okay. Go back to this monitor here. Go down. Okay. Advanced display. That's what we looked a bit at a while ago. Uh, scaling. Okay, that's where. Oh, God. Got a feeling I'm going to be messing with this later today. Why, I don't know. Anyway. Um, okay, what else? Let me look over on this other screen here. It says, we've updated several system alert dialog boxes, such as the alert for when the battery is running low on your laptop or when you change your display settings with the new Windows 11 visual design. The power mode settings are now available on the power and battery page and settings. Okay. Uh, did I just close? I did, didn't I? Oh, the heck with it. I don't want to open it up. Anyway. So... What shall we, I'm going to go over here and close this off, take it out of my eye view there. Let me show you some, let's see, Google Photos. I took these pictures outside, I think it was yesterday. The sky looked, the clouds looked, you know. So these were taken outside here in this apartment complex. By the way, it was shortly after this, I took a little nap. Okay, these were taken, you know, <clears throat> at some other time was taken. Anyway, I took a little nap yesterday and I heard my ex-wife and my grown son talking. I could tell something was going on. So I stumbled out of bed and whenever I wake up I have to go uh, take a leak. So I did that and it takes me a little while. A little while to start and a little while to drip, drip, drip out and then a little while to shut it off, you know. And then about that time I smelled something in my room and it takes my brain when I wake up, I don't know, 10 minutes to function properly, but I stumbled out of here and then I could smell when I went in the other room and my ex-wife was very upset and she had uh, called. <laughs> I mean, the first the first call should have been, you know, to me. I mean, I 
I worked 30 years hospital security. We were the uh, hazmat response team for the whatever. Um, we did OSHA, you know, OSHA inspections, and we did, you know, we did everything. At the very, it varied from hospital to hospital, but uh, before I worked hospital for 30 years, I I worked at other, you know, other things. When I was in grade school, high school, yes, you know, thing. When I was, I don't exactly when I I got into civil defense in uh, Kansas City, Missouri. We met monthly at the city hall. If we had a good turnout, it was like uh, 25 people, you know, for Kansas City, Missouri Civil Hall, you know, uh, civil defense. You know, a the, during the Cold War, I mean, this is when you, you know, duck and cover under your, uh, your desk if you were a kid. Uh, I was in civil defense. I was in the Air Force Auxiliary uh, Ground Observer Corps. I uh, stood watches on top of the Army Record Center, uh, watching for enemy aircraft, Russian bombers, you know, in, over Kansas City, Missouri. I think it's kind of late at that point. I mean, actually, they would have wanted to know, you know, uh, what city they were over if, if, you know, if we were still alive. But I was in the, you know, I was in the Ground Observer Corps. I was trained by the Civil Defense and Light Rescue. Uh, I was trained by the uh, state of Missouri civil for the civil defense and radiological monitoring and got me, you know, got my certificate for that. If there had been nuclear war uh, or an accident of some sort, they would have expected me to, uh, hey, skinny kid, uh, here's your Geiger counter. Go out and find out if it's safe for the rest of us to come out, that type of thing. Okay, I, I was a uh, welder, I was a boiler maker, worked, you know, built, I built railroad cars, I built, I built uh, large, I built trucks, I built super large trucks. Uh, I dealt with, you know, acetylene, propane, uh, all types of things that you deal with in, con you know, construction. Uh, on and on. I, uh, the, uh, when the Air Force did away with the Ground Observer Corps, we were trained as weather observers by the Weather Department for watching, you know, for, and reporting tornadoes and that type of thing. And, uh, every one of the hospitals that I worked at, security, you know, not only did we have to, you know, be aware of what to watch for and report and getting the hospital into code gray or whatever the code was for there. And, uh, but we had to go around to, you know, all the nursing, all the employees, wherever we could find them, you know, with a VCR or whatever and show them every year the uh, tornado procedures and severe thunderstorms, severe, you know, all of this kind of stuff. Uh, years later, I was uh, trained as a volunteer firefighter for a volunteer firefighting department. As soon as I finished, as soon as we, the group, finished the training, everybody was wondering, why aren't we getting our card so we can run, you know, blue lights and siren or whatever, and I had a feeling and <laughs> that the fire chief had uh, found out that I had... Uh, when I started the training, I was not a reserve officer for Raymore PD, but during the training, I became a reserve officer for the Raymore PD. And uh, so I got, everybody's waiting to get their, you know, the card. Uh, I already had a siren mounted on my private vehicle and I had a red light on the dash, but I had a blue stocking cap that I kept over it for years. I think I only had to use it once or twice. Uh, but, uh, you know, so all this training that I, you know, I had, and I, you know, I dealt with fires in a hospital, uh, ice storms that took the power out for hospitals, all this type of, I dealt with all this kind of stuff. So here there is this 
odor, and I you know I wake up and I my ex-wife in the other room has you know she's freaking out. She has asking our son, "Do you smell that or whatever?" And of course he smells it, she smells it, I smell it as I'm heading that direction. She's also called our grown daughter, you know. And the grown daughter is coming, you know, is coming over here. You know, of course, she lives in the same apartment complex that we do. But, you know, shouldn't I have been the first call? I mean, now, if it was the smell of, you know, natural gas, and there's no natural gas here except down by the office there's a a boiler down there for heating up hot water and then it's piped through the ground. But none of these apartments have any gas. There's no gas here. It's all there. Everything's all electric. But, you know, right away, if, if it's, you know, call the fire department, you know, if you smell gas. Uh, shouldn't I have been the first person to, uh, I mean, it only took, a, you know, but my grown daughter shows up. My, uh, in fact, my grandson, my grown grandson, he lives, he should, you know, uh, he shows up, he's over here. Shouldn't I have been the first person to call, but, you know, I was heading that way anyway. And maybe they knew that if I, when I woke up that I wasn't any good for her until I emptied my bladder. And it actually takes about 10 minutes before my brain starts working, but my God. I am not the smartest person in the world. I'm not the smartest person in in uh, Fort Worth, you know. I, but I've had a lot of experience. Uh, by the way, stupid talk about doing. I mean, talking about. It, I was working. Uh, <coughs> talk about doing something stupid. I was working uh, a dark truck company and we built, I worked in the body shop, so we built the body part of the truck, you know, the, the stuff that the rock or uh, gold or whatever that's dumped in this thing, you know, in mining. And a picture of the largest truck you've ever seen and then just, uh, you know, time it two or ten or something, right? I mean, that's how big these trucks are, unless you've been, unless you work for the Peabody Coal Company, in which case you used our, you know, you used our trucks. Our trucks, we built them, like, you know, and then we had to disassemble them so that they could be shipped, uh, like, to South Africa, and they were shipped to South Africa. Some of our uh, workers who had seniority, if they wanted to, went to South Africa, went down in the mines, and the trucks that we had built and then took apart went down in the mines, and then they were reassembled by our people there in South Africa. I mean, uh, anyway, so I was up on the body of this truck, you know, welding it, and, uh, you know, we had, of course, acetylene tanks around there and other kind of tanks for different types of things and uh, you know had power you know the electrical power coming in into you know big boxes and that type of stuff and I know the voltage was I'm not sure if we had anything higher than 440 coming in right next to our workstation but I know it was 440 you know and the cable was like this big you know big around and boom uh, it broke, you know, popped off, and it was like a snake, or like if you're, if you've ever seen, if you've been a fireman or you were, uh, you've seen the hoses, you know, when they're, the water in the, the, the hose is just going every which way, that's what this power line was doing, this power thing was doing, you know, with sparks flying out from it, and like, a, like an idiot, I raised my hood up, I jumped down off the truck, which is considerable heights, by the way, and uh, danced around uh, this 440 volt thing and went over and shut the power off to it. 
then after I did that, I went back up on top of the body to start welding again. And then I thought, that was not smart. <laughs> that was a stupid move. And that's the same place where, uh, when we were building these truck bodies, uh, I enjoyed it because we built the bodies and it'd be like three of us, you know, like the lead man who was, uh, kind of the layout guy and that type of stuff. And then there'd be two welders, you know, of course we would do the settling cutting if we needed to or whatever, you know, whatever needed to be done. But we would go, you know, it, you kind of knew after uh, you knew what you were going to be doing. Like, you know, when you left off, when you came back the next day, you knew, okay, you know, and we knew we'd, you know, but, you know, in the beginning we'd go out, uh, take the overhead crane out you know, running over, cred, you know, to pick up a piece of, sh sh you know, metal, gigantic piece of metal, bring it in and put it on the jig. That'd be, you know, the floor of the thing. And then we'd eventually go out and we'd get to, for the side and we'd tack weld that and then the tack weld the other and you do that kind of stuff. Anyway, when we went out for that steel, that, that dock was up there quite a ways. But the highest dock I've ever seen, and I'm talking about later on, I was you know, uh, worked part time for, uh, well, I had my own for about a, a year. I had a security patrol service, but I worked also part time uh, for security patrol services and, uh, you know, checked factories and uh, car lots and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, this was the biggest area down that I'd, because this was not a dock for a truck to back up to, you know, this was way up there. Anyway, I went out and for some reason, I, I needed to get down instead of, you know, going over and taking the stairs down because I think I was working with this steel and this kind of stuff. Uh, just for a few seconds, which was long enough, I needed to get down, so I just jumped. And then on the way down, I thought, this was not a good idea, and then I hit the ground. And I didn't break anything, but I just wonder if, <laughs> I wonder if I ended up an inch shorter than what I really was. Anyway, moral of the story is, you know, uh, my family should, uh, my ex-wife really, well, she has some problems, I think, but she just, I don't think she has any faith or any confidence in me or anything else, you know, she, she'll, uh, but I have had a little bit of experience, you know, when a tornado watch or something like that, you know, she'll be telling me what she thinks, you know, we should do or or what is that, you know, you know, of course she can, you know, she's in a wheelchair. But, uh, it's just too bad she doesn't really have much respect for me. I don't think. And maybe she doesn't for anybody. Anyway, thank you for watching this uh, video. I kind of ended on a bummer thing, didn't it? Kind of, I think, because it's kind of embarrassing, you know. Here, do I want to mention this or not? Yeah. No, because I live in the, this apartment complex. I don't want to mention something like that. I. I went to the office and told the office that there had been a. Uh, an explosion here in the apartment complex. And the uh, lady that works there uh, told me, oh, that was uh, a transformer because it was that we we're having some weather like that. You know, that was a transformer. I said, no, there was an explosion on a, an apartment on the on the deck thing. The, the door is blown open. And there's a debris field, you know, with stuff there, you know, a perfect, if you want to do an example of, you know, checking for debris for where a blast came through, you know, I said, no, it's, you know, 
No, no, it was a transformer. And I said, you know, I didn't, I, it was like, I tried to persuade her a little bit, you know, no. And then, you know, I didn't say, well, you know, I was a volunteer firefighter and I mean, I didn't, it just didn't do any good. I just, okay. I think that what, what, it, you know, we have a, we have patios here. And I think somebody, this was not terrorism or anything like that. I think somebody had something. Maybe they were, you know, uh, uh, had something stored, you know, in a, in a jar or something, you know, for some reason. And uh, the heat or something made it, you know, explode. And it didn't blow the door off the hinges or anything like that. The, I think the door you could push on it or, you know, pretty much open, unless it was locked, you know. Anyway. Uh, don't listen to me. What in the hell do I know? 70 years old. Uh, worked. God only knows how many different jobs handled, I don't know how many different kinds of, you know, situations, worked in all kinds of weather and stuff like that. But I guess that works out good for my, like my ex-wife, I'll say I'm going to take the trash out. Well, not, I'm less and less, I'm able to do anything now, but uh, she'll say, well, it's raining. Okay, well, it's raining, you know, I, I you know. I've worked in the rain. Florida, I think in the United States, I think Florida, maybe it's just in the United States is, I'm not in Florida now, but I spent a year and a half in Orlando, and then I spent five and a half years in Miami, working uh, security at a hospital there. And, and I talked about that. That was, that was a sad experience after spending 30 years working at various hospitals in Kansas City, Missouri. And then to go down to that hospital, uh, but you know, I'd be out walking in the parking lot. Or uh, now, anyway, Florida is. I don't know if it's the number one spot for lightning strikes in the world, or if it's the number one in the United States. I think it's the number one in the world. I believe. Uh, the number of lightning strikes and they're very careful you know pretty careful down there but i'd be out you know just because it's if you're security you know you need to be you know other otherwise somebody's going to oh okay well we want to break into a car we want to do this or that the uh, security guard whenever it's raining he goes and gets underneath you know a shelter over there no you know you need to be moving around and but I'd have employees would call me over to the smoking area that had a little, you know, roof over it, you know. Oh, you shouldn't be out there, it's, you know. It might lightning, you know. Anyway, thank you for watching.